The owner of Fire Mountain Gems and Beads loves these box pendants. I cannot wait to explain to you how they come together. We are going to start with the Art Clay 650 slow dry. We want to have a little bit of working time here. We're going to be texturing it and doing a couple other processes. So I'm going to take out a pack of clay and I'm going to start conditioning it. I've oiled my work surface and my tools before I started just so we were ready. And I'm going to roll this out to three card thickness. I'm just going to flip it so that as we're working, it's distributing out in even proportions because eventually we're going to make a square. I don't want it to be too long of a thin rectangle. And it's just good practice. Then I'm just going to trim off a little bit to save for later. These will eventually be the wall, so I'm just going to take a nice piece and I'm just going to set that aside. I'm going to take the other portion of the clay and put it onto a textured sheet. There are many sheets to choose from. Each one is double sided so you can choose raised or indented. And we're going to just roll these out now to a two card thickness. And that texture will be applied to both sides of this clay. Okay. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to invert it onto my nonstick sheet. And I'm going to use my clay cutter to trim it up to square. I'm just going to let all of these pieces dry until they're ready to be refined. Once they're dry, we'll trim up those edges and round the corners so they're not sharp. I'll use the salon board to start just to kind of knock off any of those rough edges from the cutter. And then we'll use the polishing papers to really bring out that finish. And what I'd like to show you is how the texture is different between the two, just from the two different sides of the one sheet, you get two different textures. So that's something to keep in mind when you're working with these sheets. And then from here, I'm going to measure my square. And once you have one measured because you're using a cutter, they'll all be the same. So I'm just going to mark on my square so that I have the same amount of millimeters in from each edge. And then I'm going to draw lines and make somewhat of a square inside of the square so I have a frame to work within as I start to add my walls so they're all in the same plane and all in the right place. This takes a lot of the guesswork out. Now I'm going to go back to the piece that I dried earlier that's going to be used for the walls. And what I'll do with that is also use my pen to mark for my measurement exactly where I need to trim it and eventually file it down to. So I'll take my blade, the one that's protected with the popsicle sticks just so it's safe to work with, and I'm just going to trim that. And I'm going to trim the other end. This, by trimming it, I'm just taking out some of the, the amount of work I'll have to do when I go to file it. And I'll take the salon board and I'm going to work on an angle, I'm going to put my hand on an angle so I can keep this nice and straight. And I'm just going to work that end so it's smooth and f flat. And then I'm going to turn it on a side and create a 45 degree angle so I can miter my corners. That'll help when we're putting the pieces together so that the piece all comes together kind of like a picture frame. You want to have all those edges on a nice 45 degree angle. They don't have to be perfect, which is great. It's not like working with wood where if you make a mistake, you really have to fill in later. The paste is going to take care of all of that, which is such a, uh, an amazing, amazing way to go. So we'll take our paste. And I like to use my tweezers. It gives me a little bit more to work with. So I have my hands free. And I'll take the paste, and I'm really going to load up that edge. Now, when the clay dries, when the paste dries, it's going to start to shrink up. So you really want to make sure you have a lot on there so that as it shrinks and kind of pulls into itself, you have still something holding all those seams together. You don't want any gaps. And I'm just going to invert it and place it on those lines we drew earlier, which really just makes life so much simpler. And you can sure it up. You still have time to move it. 
so that everything's straight and really in the place where you want it to be. It's kind of fun. It's kind of like woodworking, but a lot easier and a lot less dust, <laughs> which is great. So here you'll see I have one piece done. And again, all I'm gonna do is cut my pieces to size, miter my corners, and assemble them all in the same fashion until I have all four walls put together. Now I have all four walls and I want to take another piece of fresh clay and add that to one of the edges, it doesn't matter which one, just along one of those walls. And what I'm going to do now is add my bale. And the bale will be what I use to hang the pendant from later. And I'm going to apply a little bit of water with my paintbrush so that these two surfaces want to stick together. And then I'll use some paste and I'll just make sure that I get everything really well attached. You don't want any seams here either. So you'll want to make sure you really work to make sure that that's filled in. Now it's time to put the bale on. The bale has feet on it so that it gets into the clay so that when it's fired, it all centers together and stays in place. I'm going to put the bale right into that fresh clay. And once it's in place, I'll apply a layer of paste over the feet just so it's all together. I go over everything there and then I'll set it aside to dry. And if necessary, I'll refine it and add more paste again. And then here I have one that's dry and now we just need to refine it. This is really the best time to take as much time as you can and use as much patience as you have to really make sure everything is really the way you want it. Because once this piece is fired, it eliminates all of the handwork you'll have to do with any metal smithing tools. The more you do now, the less you'll have to do after it's fired. Make sure all those corners are good. And then the other really great thing to do to make sure all the edges are flat is go across your salon board. You can use your sandpaper, you can use your polishing papers. You just want to make sure you have everything nice and even. Here, I'll show you how when you go across on the polishing papers. You just go in a circular motion and you could reverse. Just so you're sure everything's on the same plane. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a, a bead of paste and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna put a nice thick coat all around those edges so that it smushes out. You really want it to smush out. Nobody will ever see what's on the inside. They'll only ever see what's on the outside and that you can clean up when it's dry. And I'm just going to sandwich this top on. Make sure it's in place. Just kind of press firmly so that you're sure it's sticking. And I'm going to let that rest. And then while that's sitting there, I'll show you another detail that I like to add to one side of the pendant for a little added extra. It could be a secret. It could be your initials, it could be anything you want it to be. With the syringe, your, your possibilities are endless because it could be any design you want. It's a nice, fine bead of clay. It just extrudes out and it holds up that shape. You can do squiggles. It could be anything you want. You don't want to go too high, but you really can overlap and just finish. Look how cool that is. And then my paintbrush. I'm going to flood that whole top level with water. I just, I'm not going to disturb the texture that I've created now with the syringe, but I really want to make sure everything gets wet so that the layer of syringe really adheres to the clay below. And this is another time where you're going to want to come back after it's dried to make sure everything is in place. And if it's not, it's very simple to just to take care of. You add a little bit of the paste, you can add a little bit more water. Just want to make sure everything's attached because once it's fired, if it's not attached, it does run the risk of coming apart. So just take a little bit of extra care in double checking all of your work before you get to the next step. And the next step would be to fire it in the kiln. You want to fire it in the kiln and then let it cool to room temperature. Once it's cooled to room temperature, you can take it out and have at it. Get that brush going and get in all those details of your design and your box. And we're just gonna go across the surface with the steel brush, letting those wires get in there into all those crevices and all that 
detail work that you created. And then the burnisher, because of this extra texture you added, the burnisher will highlight just that top layer. So you'll have a satin finish below, and then you'll have a really bright finish on top. Which really just, it's like magic. It's always like magic no matter how many times I do it. it just, it's just amazing. And then, once your charm is finished, you'll want to do both sides, of course. And once it's finished, you can incorporate it into anything you want. I chose to put it on a rubber cord with some sterling silver beads, large hole beads, because of the size of the rubber cord. You want to make sure they slide on there. And I finished it. And let me tell you, the compliments you will get when you create this piece for yourself, you'll be amazed. I do have other boxes that I'd like to share with you that I made into more of a charm size that I finished into earrings. And then there's also the round earrings, which are still a hollow form and not of a box shape, but still a hollow form, which is another great design to explore. I hope these boxes have inspired you and shown you how easy it is to really create something three-dimensional that's right in your own kiln.